I've been playing music for as long as I can remember, even when I look like a little gremlin. And over the years, I've written some absolute banger riffs. But also, some not so banger. So in this video, I'm going to see how far I've come by finishing a song I wrote 10 years ago. I'll be venturing back through the old trusty hard drive, looking through some of my absolute shocker demos, and choosing one to turn into a complete song with my current style and skills. Perhaps I'll serenade you all with my lovely vocals again. <laughs> And at the end of the video, I'm going to get the person who's known me the longest in my life to review the tune and let me know if I've actually got any better in 10 years. Let's do it. Okay, first we need to go back in time. Back to the good old days. Back when Drop C was heavy as f I have here an ancient folder that contains riffs, demos, and basically all of my absolute bangers from my lifetime. I'd say I probably started recording my ideas when I was like 13 or 14. So honestly, there's got to be about 14 years worth of stuff here. Let's have a look. Idea for last song. <laughs> this is my last song, guys. Oh, we've got a big intro. I'm ready for the drop. Right, that is the same riff over and over again. I mean, it's not a terrible riff, but come on, we can do better. Happy Gent. Do you remember Gent? I remember when Gent came out. This is quite happy. I actually hate. <laughs> I was a confused child. <laughs> This is like metal. Johnny's solo EP track two. <laughs> oh my God, the mix. Just let me know guys in the comments if you want 14 year old Johnny's guitar tone. Cause you know, it's sounding pretty fire right now. That is a cool run that, let's listen to that again. What else we got? What is this? Prog death gent. What does it say? Oh, the title of this song is Prog Death Gent F***ing D Sausage. <laughs> oh, I remember this one. Do you know, that riff's actually pretty good. That's a contender, you know. Right, so I've stumbled across an old project of mine. <laughs> this song is called Grade 7 Flute, featuring a good friend of mine, Daniel Coyne. Shall we actually find a good song now that we can use to turn into a real tune? <laughs> oh yeah. Mate, that riff is hard. This is the one, 100%. What is that? 2014. This is literally 10 years ago. Well. 17 year old Johnny, let's finish this tune. I'm gonna start by tracking the main riff. I think I'm gonna make that the hook, like the main theme that we keep coming back to in the song. When I'm recording guitars, I'll generally record them on two tracks, one pan hard left and one pan hard right. I don't know why that's 0.20, but it's not anymore. Then I'll record two takes of the same riff and put one on each of the tracks, which creates this kind of nice wide stereo effect. And the slight differences in your guitar playing makes it sound extra thick. Thick. 
For my guitar tone, I'm using an Active Effects. And really, when I'm just doing demos, I just kind of record straight in. But if I'm doing like a final take for the real thing, I'll record the DIs and then I can reamp those or use an amp synth to get them sounding absolutely crisp. For the drums and bass, I'm using VST instruments. I've got some like pre-mixed template things that I use for writing. I'm using GGD for drums, modern and massive, and inferno bass. When I'm writing, I'll tend to do it a little bit differently every time, but I always use bass, drums, and the guitar, obviously. And I kind of write them simultaneously. That's just how I've done it, and it's worked for me. It gives you a good idea of how it's all gonna sound when it comes together as well. So far, I've obviously got the main hook. I think I have a bit of an idea for a verse, which then has to lead up to an absolutely fatty chorus. But we'll jump into this and see where we get to. So the next thing I need to do is write a large chorus. This is where I might deviate from the normal guitar, drums and bass. I just like throwing instruments in there to fill the empty space and just kind of using my ears to see what sounds right. I normally use things like strings, choirs, synths. It just kind of depends what vibe you're going for really. I think I'm definitely gonna try some synths out on this one. I was kind of thinking something like this for the chorus. pretty large. That's sounding pretty good, but it definitely needs more layers, I think. We've got a synthesizer here. It's just kind of like an airy pad, I guess. So I've programmed him some chords that should go over the top that sound like this. So when you add it all up, it should sound like this. That's sounding pretty decent. It, there's some things that I don't like. It definitely needs a bit more work doing to it. Now that I'm hearing the chorus as well, I'm not 100% on the chorus. It's all about finding the balance though, because I think sometimes as musicians, we can be our own harshest critic, so much so that it kind of paralyzes you because you keep rewriting the section or trying things differently so much that you never end up finishing it. Maybe sometimes you just have to accept that the section isn't exactly what you want it to be, but it doesn't sound bad either. I just kind of release it anyway so that you can move on and start working on the next project. It's definitely not a bad start though. I'm excited to see where we go from here. So I'll see you guys tomorrow. Right, so I had an idea for a nasty breakdown this morning. It came to me when I was in the shower of all places. That is where the greatest of riffs are born. So while it's still in my head, I'm gonna try tracking it. There's no guarantee that it's gonna fit into the song, but we're gonna try it anyway. Sometimes you just have a riff or an idea that you just have to track. And if it doesn't fit, you can kind of send it to the riff graveyard and you might use it, you might not, you might use it in a different project. Sometimes you've just got to chug it in there. <laughs> I'm determined to get the song structure finished pretty soon, so let's get finished. Right, so there's a little bit of a problem. I actually really like the new riff that I've written, so much so that it makes me wanna go back and change pretty much everything I've already written. Basically, I'm not so keen on the triple time feel anymore, but if I decide to change that, it'll mean I'll have to basically rewrite everything I've written so far, which sucks. It's definitely annoying, but sometimes you just, you just you get onto something and it's right, and you've just gotta go with the flow. I can feel it, so I'm gonna make these changes. It'll still be very similar to the original riff that I wrote. Same notes, same sort of positioning in the bar. I'm gonna put a bit of a spin on it. It's, it's gonna sound very similar, but more my modern style. And yeah, I guess we'll see what we come up with. Yes, I have to redo the entire song, but it'll be worth it. Let's get it.
Okay, it's time for some vocals. I'm definitely not the best vocalist in the world, but someone told me once that even though I'm not the best, it shouldn't limit my creativity. So I'm gonna give it a go. It's tough because when you sing, you've got to try and get through your own nerves. It took me a long time to get the confidence to sort of just sing. And sometimes I still feel very nervous about doing it, but it's one of those things that just gets easier the more you do it, I think. And I find it easier to actually write the vocal lines whilst I'm actually physically singing. Unfortunately for you guys, you're gonna have to listen to this. So I'm just going to sing for you all and we're going to try and create some absolute sex vocals. <laughs> well, let's try and create some sick vocals. Test. La, la, la. I tend to just jam the song on a loop and see if I can find some melodies that I like. One Christ. Once I've found some melodies that I quite like, I'll see if I can write some words to match. So I, I actually work melody then words. Some people probably do it the other way around. I'm just going with the flow, baby. <laughs> just going with what feels right. Sa sausage roll. <laughs> I'm left in a broken home. Now I'm left in a broken home. I also totally forgot to say that I'm going to try screaming on this one. I cannot scream at all. I've watched a few YouTube videos on how to do it. I think I can get a fry scream, maybe like a low scream and a high scream, but that's about all I can do. Hopefully it'll come out sounding hard as fuck. So the song is getting there now. I've pretty much finished writing the whole thing. The only things left to do are finish the vocals and then mix it. I'm really happy with how the chorus came out. In fact, let me show you the chorus vocals. Broke my heart into pieces and threw it all away. My head won't believe. I just wish I could numb the pain. Obviously the lyrics are as metal as they could possibly be. Who doesn't love a good metal song about heartbreak? I'm super close to finishing now, so I'm just gonna get straight into it. Let's see if we can get this thing finished off. And there it is, finito. We are done. Do you know what? I think 17 year old Johnny would be really proud of this one. This has come out super nice. It's been such a fun experience. I can definitely see how far I've come in 10 years. And also there's something weirdly satisfying about taking an old idea and finishing it off. The poor little riff had been sat in my hard drive for years. It's mad to think that I wrote that 10 years ago. Music has always been a really important part of my life. And I hope that this project of mine might inspire you to revisit some old ideas that you've written in the past, or even just to pick up your instrument again. Thanks so much for watching the video, and if you enjoyed it, then please consider subscribing. I plan on making all sorts of musical videos in the future. And if you like the tune, then let me know, and it should be available on all the streaming platforms too. So yeah, here's the final result.
What did you think? Jesus Christ. <laughs>